Ladies and gentlemen, boys and girls, welcome to episode 311 of the Spearhead Sundays podcast. 10. 310? Are you sure? Okay. I feel like 310 was last time. You fact check me, 311. Now, there's a big controversy. Oh, you've lost your phone? Well, what am I even paying you for? Okay. Obviously, a lot of people have been complaining about the fact that Keelan doesn't get paid here. Well, uh, I've been uploading, the views have been going better, and <laughs> Keelan is, has been generously remunerated for his time here on the show. And when Keelan is generously paid, what that means is, is he can be disrespectfully treated. That's how it works, because that's, that's what the relationship that every employer has with their employee. Oh, you're right, 311. It's a C and and that's it. Next week you're not getting paid. But on the board it said three oh nine, so I changed it to three ten. Yeah, okay. So so that means that last week you didn't change it to three ten. So you've <laughs> yeah. actually made a mistake last week as well. So uh, that means for the next two weeks you're not getting paid. Oh no. Now I did pay Keelan quite generously today. Um and now a lot of people like to accept their their um salary some people will take it when they're on a really high salary like keelan some people they don't want to get taxed all of that money so they'll ex accept other forms of payment so some people will take a portion of, of of what they're owed in money and then a portion in shares now obviously i would never part with my empire so keelan won't be getting any shares uh and, and also no money either instead uh, uh keelan is being paid today by why don't you tell everyone the generous salary package you received today. A regular ice latte, mm -hmm. extra strong. You got extra strong? I always well, that extra cost me. Strong. That cost me, that's fucking bullshit, man. <laughs> How much extra was that? 50 cents. 50 cents? You owe me 50 cents. <laughs> don't you, don't you, don't you I'll, think you can come into this place of work and rob the boss? I'll do this for free, this episode. <laughs> that's good. To make so, up for it. So, so what'll that be? You, you owe me what, $4.50? <laughs> Great, yeah. excellent. Okay, now that that's settled, there's another controversy, okay? Now, please, please, <laughs> dear God, support us on Patreon so Keelan can get at least a large. <laughs> um, there's, there's been a big controversy, all right? I am, I am being harassed, abused, stalked, and shamed for a crime that I did commit. That I didn't know that... Look, okay, I've been vlogging, all right? Now, that is that is a crime, but that's not the crime I'm being punished for. On my second channel, I've been releasing some, some videos, testing out a new format, and I did something that I'm just getting absolutely abused and harangued for doing. I, I, I told you all I've been learning how to cook. Did I say that I was a chef? Yes. You've been texting me you're a chef. Okay, but did I say that publicly? Putting on your private story. The dog is leaning on the fucking tripod of the camera and moving the shot. <laughs> I'm surrounded by incompetent people. <laughs> that looks fine, I hope. So anyway, don't bump it. I, thanks Keelan, put your thumb on the lens a little bit more. Thank you very much. Um, <laughs> thank God we have video on Spotify so even more people can see uh, this, tr this tragedy. Um, so I, I, uh, I've been learning how to cook. I don't know how to cook. I've been learning. Okay. It's been very well documented that I don't know what I'm doing in the kitchen, but I've decided to start learning. I thought I, I did some pastas. They were easy. They turned out great. I thought I'm going to try something that could kill me. I'm going to cook a chicken. All right. Cause you can die from chicken if it's undercooked. So I thought let's, let's roll the dice here. I followed the recipe to a T. I did everything the woman said and I documented that. And there is a scene where following the recipe, I washed the chicken in the sink. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. As directed by the fucking cookbook. It said, wash the chicken in the sink, inside and out, and then pat it down with a tea towel. Inside is bizarre. That's, <laughs> that's what I thought. Now, I, I previously, I thought that washing the chicken in the sink is really fucking bad because it just gets salmonella all over your kitchen sink. Mm -hmm. And also the chicken isn't even dirty anyway. And if it was, you're gonna put that thing in the oven, so it's fine. Mm -hmm. So why did you do it if that's what you thought? Cause it fucking said to in the book. So I thought I was thinking that it would be, cause here's the thing, when I cook, I don't read like the full, like I don't read the whole thing and then right. read it as I'm doing it. Yeah. 
I read step one and I do step one and then I go, I wonder what step two will be. It's a mystery. <laughs> the, the furthest planning ahead I will do is I will get all of the ingredients and I'll put them on the kitchen bench. Uh, but there has been more than once where I've started cooking something and step two will be like, you know, cut these things up and leave them in the fridge for 40 minutes. And I go, well, why the fuck wasn't that step zero? You know, <laughs> like the day beforehand, make sure you do this and leave it in the fridge. Why would you make that step two? You old Italian bitch. She's dead. I can say that. <laughs> that probably makes it a lot worse. I shouldn't say that. I'm very grateful grateful to Michella Hazan. Um, anyway, I just thought that, I don't know, it would be like wash the chicken in the sink because you it, it affects... Like I thought it was like a taste thing or I thought I was about to do something to it that would, uh, that would only be possible if it had been washed and then pat down with water. I don't know what I was thinking. I was just doing what I was told. I was following the recipe to a T. I upload it and then I get all of these comments saying that I'm going to kill my whole family because of salmonella. Now, let me tell, tell you this. To everyone watching the show, I'm much more likely to flip out on my family as a as a reaction to all these negative comments. So maybe think about that. You know? It was Melbourne Cup yesterday. Domestic violence spikes. Just oh, That's sad. <laughs> but it's becoming a little bit funny the longer we sit in it. Mm. Yeah. Anyway, guys. <laughs> I have some um, sound sound clips from Jasmine. She sent me one, My, two, three, four, five sound oh, voice messages. Five like sound voices. See, I, I'm I'm really uh, experimenting with this vlog, and the the episode that that this is in, I was really proud of because mm. I thought it was like the first one was a bit of a test. I liked it, but I was like, I think I think from doing that, I know what I did not like, and I think I know what I do like. So I'm going to film it this way. And I came up with the second one. And I was like, oh, this is actually what I want it to be. I love this. So I show it to my girl. I go, I would love your feedback on this because this, I mean, it's a very personal episode. It's probably the most vulnerable I've been. Mm -hmm. And I show it to her. And, and the only thing she came back to me feedback wise was, what the fuck are you doing with the chicken in our sink? Mm -hmm. You're going to kill us all. Hey, Keelan, as much as I would love to help you um, drag Lewis over the coals on the podcast tomorrow, I'm actually out of town for a few days and I don't have reception, so I thought I would just give you a few tidbits about the fucking chicken incident. Oh. The best part about it is that he um, documented the whole thing on his vlog and he didn't even know. He didn't even realise. That he was literally documenting a crime scene. Um, my fucking God, when I saw that, he got me to watch the vlog. He's like, there's a secret something in there for you. There's a little something to make you happy. I didn't get past the part where he started making the fucking chicken give the tap a lap dance. Uh, oh. <laughs> I mean, it was bad enough to see him rinse the chicken off in the sink. Mm. I was like, well, at least he can scrub the sink out after that. And he is following the instructions. Yeah. So upon my second viewing, well, maybe more like my seventh viewing, because I shot it and then I edited it mm. and then I watched it a few times before I posted it. Mm -hmm. And then I watched it with someone else. So maybe upon my 15th viewing, I did notice that there was some slight touching uh, and also some very minor insertion of the tap into the chicken. She also told me that it, there was no hand soap in the hand soap bar, like mm -hmm. the squeezy thing. Yeah. So you just weren't washing your hands. Uh, that is slander. <laughs> that, is, that is partially true slander. There was no hand soap. However, I did use the dish soap on my hands. Okay, that's all right. And then they felt really weird yeah. for the rest of the day. Did so they, they I'm, itchy? Yeah, so I'm probably going to replenish the hand soap. I think there's a reason why those two are separated. <laughs> but also, you would think that the tingling sensation I was feeling on my hands meant that they were more clean. <laughs> So actually, I would say that how clean my hands were completely balances out the salmonella contaminated kitchen. 
Mm. And she should feel lucky that I didn't use the the, the fucking tea towel like the woman said. <laughs> Crazy. The, you know, the reason why I know that, that you should not wash the chicken is because I remember there was this huge like viral Twitter thing um, where the FDA was like, hey guys, stop washing your chicken in the sink. It gets salmonella everywhere. And apparently it's like a really huge thing uh, that African-Americans do. Like all of these black people were saying, these white people are crazy. You have to wash it because it comes out of the... And I sympathize because, I mean, you get it out of the thing and it's slimy. So it's like, what is that? Is it sweating? It, I think actually the cleaning thing must come from when you used to cook your own chicken. Like you used to grow... That Red probably fire. makes I sense. Think that's where that actually comes if from. If you pluck your own chicken, then you yeah. would you would have to wash it in the sink. Yeah. But chickens that you buy from a butcher are cleaned. Well, clean it clean enough. I mean Yeah, but that's that is the thing that is and I know this is wrong, but your brain goes, cleaned with what? Yeah. Are there chemicals on it? Yeah. Because you have to wash your fruit and you have to wash your vegetables and they're like quotation marks clean they don't have any bugs or parasites on it but they have all this shit that kills the parasites mm. so i'll say this i'm 100 percent right and i'll be accepting no feedback okay how's that yeah Is that I'll good right. yeah great okay um, case closed do you clean like pork and beef i you i think you i don't know i'll have to refer to my cookbook and then google it because apparently you can't trust this woman yeah you know what the problem is? She was born in 1920, so she probably was like throttling chickens in the backyard just before bringing them in. Mm. You know, some chicken she'd named and looked after for four years. It stops laying eggs. And you're like, you don't have a name anymore. You're dinner. Oh. Mamma mia. Um, <laughs> so, yeah, look, we're on Spotify is basically what I'm trying to say here, guys. We're on Spotify and, uh, and, and it's going great. It's going great. Have you heard about the... The NFT situation, the news no, that's been happening. I have not. This is really good. So obviously, right, NFTs, we haven't heard about them for, I don't know, basically like a year. They haven't been in the mainstream conversation ever since everyone lost all of their money. Um, but there's been one project that has that was like the top project the whole time of the NFT boom and has managed to hold on to that place. So they've gone down a lot too, but they're they're still worth a lot of money. Like they're worth more than, than like a Rolex or a car. Yep. They're worth a lot of money. Uh, so they're still like these big status symbols and they're one of the only like communities uh, of people that still run events and still do, you know, cool shit. The Bored Apes. Um, they recently had uh, a big conference in Hong Kong. And this is the headline. So all of the, uh, all these people are here to celebrate. Oh, look at the, the Bored Ape convention <laughs> guests at board ape event in hong kong struck by vision problems oh, no. <laughs> more than a dozen attendees of nft groups festival which used ultraviolet light complained of eye burn on social media <laughs> the ape fest festival is held every year for members of the board ape yacht club um, more than a dozen uh, people who attended last last weekend's Ape Fest in Hong Kong took to social media afterwards to complain that they were suffering from eye pain and vision problems, some reporting complete blindness. <laughs> Jesus. <laughs> One attender posting on X, formerly Twitter, can we stop saying that? It's Twitter. <laughs> I am not saying X, formerly Twitter. I'm going to say Twitter until until Elon files for bankruptcy. Okay, it's fucking Twitter. I'm not calling it X. I'm not calling it X, formerly Twitter. I'm not calling it Twitter, now X. It's Twitter. There's no... Does anyone call it... Have you, have you heard one person say, I was on X the other day? No. If, you, if I heard I was on X the other day, I would, I would think, oh, you were at a nightclub doing ecstasy. <laughs> you know, like if someone said I was on X the other day looking at dozens of bodies of children, I'd be like, oh, that guy had a bad trip. And he'd be like, no, 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 I was on the website X. I'd be like, oh, that makes more sense. Because that's the, I mean, that's the only thing that's on fucking Twitter these days is just like, hey, look at all these dead civilians. I'm like, oh, fuck, I'm uninstalling it. It's horrible. And how much does that help the war effort? For whichever team you support. <laughs> I can't, man, that thing, I can't, uh, I can't look at it. I saw all of these posts of these people going, you have to talk about it. 
you must you must share you must talk about it you must advocate every time i look at it it makes my brain go you should have depression i can't look at it <laughs> i can't look at it it's a fucking thousand year old more than a thousand year old conflict i feel like i'm not educated enough on it to, to voice a fucking opinion beyond i think they should stop doing that to each other as far as how we get there, a solution, two-party state, I don't know. And I feel like the only way to get even like a semblance of understanding would be to do a fucking PhD and be born in one of the other two places. I don't know. <laughs> I don't think anybody knows. And I don't think that the Instagram model who I followed to look at her tits knows either. All right? <laughs> I mean, I couldn't, I couldn't tell you the amount of times where I've like opened up an Instagram story thinking I'm going to see a nice ass and then I just see like some father holding their child. I'm like, oh my God, <laughs> my day's been ruined. And that's not to say that I'm the real victim because I'm certainly not. And it is an absolute privilege to be able to go, I don't want to look at that. But I've seen all of these fucking posts and all of these viral videos of people going, I saw one the other day of like, going, I can't believe that this influencer is posting a get ready with me uh, right now when they should be talking about this conflict. Mm -hmm. And it's like, okay, I understand that this woman's get ready with me doesn't matter at all. That's true, okay? But can we also acknowledge that this bitch needs to pay rent? Mm -hmm. And it's like, well, if, if she only did this, now she can't make any money. And now you have nothing to watch other than like a live feed of just war. And also there are other wars going on. There are other genocides. There are other famines. There are countless horrible things that are happening in the world that like, are they going to get no airtime? Uh, is the only art that anyone's allowed to create about these horrible things? Are we only allowed to talk about these horrible things? Are we only allowed to look at like, are you listening to music on your drive to work? Why are you doing that? Shouldn't you be listening to like daily news podcasts about the the most complex conflict in the history of of the world? Maybe it it. I think that it's fucking horrible, and I think that it should stop. I don't know how. I don't think I can contribute anything valuable other than this. If I think that there's going to be a huge, especially with young people, I reckon about ten years from now, because of all of this stuff. I think there's going to be a bunch of 10 to 14 year old children four to 18 year old kids that 10 years from now are going to be having fucking nightmares about the shit that they've been seeing nonstop every single day from this conflict that will probably still be going by the time they're having those fucking, like, I feel like all of these people are giving themselves PTSD thinking that they're helping, but they're just fucking their brains up and they're just hurting themselves and they're, they're doing absolutely nothing. Like all these, like, you know, I reached out to one of these people and I was like, what should we do? They're posting, you need to do something. You need to do this, you need to do that. And I'm like, do you know any resources? Do you know any charities? Do you know any protests? And they didn't. And it's like, well, how obviously this is a fucking horrible thing and it shouldn't, it should not continue. And it's awful, but also, and awareness should be made, but it's all, that's all that I'm seeing is just, Hey, look at this fucking civilian with their legs blown off. And it's like, ah, oh, that's caused so much psychic fucking damage to me that now I can't be funny. And obviously being funny, like in the scheme of things doesn't matter. But like, if that's the metric on what we're gonna base everything, it's like, why are you going to work then? Why are you going to work in your fucking call center or in your retail job when you really should be out there in the street campaigning? Like, where does that end? Is it only for influencers? Is it only for creatives? Is it only for vloggers? Or do musicians also have to write songs about it? And I understand if there's like some some person with like fucking 25 million followers who is staying silent about it. It's like, yeah, maybe they should say something. But also if it's just like some fucking beauty vlogger girl who's like 19, I don't think she should chime in. Like she doesn't know what the fuck's going on and she doesn't have the ability 
to come up with like uh, a take that will help in like what three days i've been seeing all these people like posting fucking you know here's what i did in a day and they're coming to like you need to talk about this mm -hmm. and it's like well they don't if they don't know about it at all it, which if you know they're like fucking 18 to 25 they may not even have heard about this and that's not that doesn't that's not their fault you know you you expect them to kind of fucking get caught up on a thousand years of like incredibly complex conflict and then to be like all right here's my take and also i'm picking a side it's like crazy and so much of the shit that i'm seeing as well is just like blatant propaganda from both sides you know people will be like oh look at this and then someone will be like it'll have like fucking thirty thousand retweets or reposts or whatever they're fucking called now and then like two days later there'll be a community note that says oh this is from 2015 and actually the other team did it to them that wasn't and it's like okay great so that's just fucking i don't know it is i think that it should stop and that's that's my nuanced take on it and and i but i also think that that if the only thing that you're consuming on social media is like the brutal horrific reality of war <laughs> slow down a little bit and ask yourself like ryan long released such a good video about it it made me angry that i didn't think about it he it was the tight it's a sketch youtube sketch it was something along the lines of um man trying to solve israel palestine conflict by watching hours of battle footage <laughs> and it's and, and it's just him sitting there going yeah i'm watching all these people die and, and i and i and i'm i think it's helping <laughs> and it's like is that or is that just fucking destroying your brain like i remember when i was uh like 12 and i first started getting onto 4chan the shit that i saw i still remember and I remember deciding to kind of not let myself see any more of that. Whereas now I see all over TikTok, all these fucking kids that are like 14 plus, like posting, you have to look. And it's like, I don't think that you should. <laughs> I think that maybe it's good to be aware that these horrible things are happening. And maybe you should go to a protest or ask someone who really understands this, what you should do and how you can help. But fucking sitting on Twitter and looking at all this horrible footage, I mean, you deleted Twitter mm, the other day. I deactivated day. it, yeah. Was it, was it because of all this, seeing all this horrible shit? Yeah. Yeah, and it's like, how does seeing all this shit help? Obviously, it's, I don't know. I feel like, <laughs> I, you know what I think? Here's my opinion, my genuine, honest opinion. I think they should stop doing that. <laughs> <laughs> That's what I think. Yeah. Um, what was I talking about? Talking about the NFT thing. <laughs> Oh yeah, NFTs. Okay, sorry, I got angry. You know what that was? It was like I'm not going to call it X, and then I was like, and anyway, <laughs> Israel Palestine. Um, all right, woke up in the middle of the night. So one attender posting on X, uh, formerly Twitter, under the handle Crypto June, wrote, "Woke up in the middle of the night after Ape Fest with so much pain in my eyes that I had to go to the hospital." Yeah, that's what happens when you look at an NFT for too long. You start to go blind because <laughs> the art's so fucking terrible and your brain realizes how expensive they are. So you start to lose access to your fucking vision. Um, the doctor told me it was due to the UV from stage lights. I go to festivals often what? but have never experienced this. That's interesting. Fellow attender Chloe G told the Financial Times that the stage lights were really strong and by about 3 a.m. after the party, she started feeling as though her eyes were being burnt with spicy chili. She's still what? experiencing discomfort. Uh, Adrian described waking up with severe eye burn and going to hospital where he was diagnosed with having photokeratitis, snow blindness in both eyes. Jesus. The condition is caused by unprotective, unpro unprotected exposure of the cornea and conjunctiva to radiation. <laughs> That's so good. You think you're going to look at fucking JPEGs that cost $60,000. Instead, you go blind. I think that's a net benefit to society. Anyone who goes to 8 Fest should have been chemically blinded. I reckon they should have done it with eye drops as you went in. You know, tell everyone, all right, you need these special VR contacts. They'd fucking put them in. They wouldn't think twice, would they? You're going to be able to see your, your ape in, alt, in, in alternate reality, <laughs> in augmented reality. They'll put them in, they go blind, and, and the world gets better. <laughs> um, 
That's uh, really good. And then this is their the Board Ape Yacht Club's uh, statement. Yuga Labs, they own the NFT. Well, they created the NFT. Uh, the other people own it. Just kidding. No one really owns an image. Um, actually, you own it on the blockchain. All right, cool. Until quantum computing learns how to uh, hack the blockchain and then it's all fucking worthless. Based on our <laughs> estimates, you know that's happening right now? So blockchain, it's like super, super, super encrypted. So a human brain could never hack it. Uh, but uh, the US government has just like released all these uh, memos to their um, all of their departments going, normal encryption does not work anymore. We need to switch to like quantum encryption, which basically means like the US government is uh, kind of admitting to everyone like, hey, we can hack anything. We've hacked everything. And that means that China can hack everything. So we're going to have to switch everything to the new upgraded system. Uh, blockchain's on the old one. So I watched this very interesting thing of like, theoretically, once a consumer gets access to like quantum computing, they can just go into blockchain and make transactions happen. <laughs> you know, take, take fucking a dollar or a hundred bucks from everyone's wallet, put it in yours. <laughs> yeah. The computer makes it okay. And then fucking... That potentially is happening right now. Um, anyway, Yuga Lab says, based, oh, I, based on our estimates, we believe that much less than 1% of those attending and working the event had these symptoms. That's really good. Minimize, minimize. <laughs> uh, they, well, they should have said, uh, we believe that, uh, that much less than 1% of those attending will make any money from this fucking scam. Based on our estimates, we believe that much less than 1% of those attending and working the event had these symptoms. While nearly everyone has indicated their symptoms have improved, we encourage anybody who feels them to seek medical attention just in case. That's really good. Like, yeah, uh, it only happened to a few people. And uh, if it's still happening, go see a doctor. It's your fault. They're fucking blasting their attendees. In what world does an NFT concert need fucking lighting like that anyway? <laughs> oh, let's get the UV radiation lights. Let's put on a fucking light show. Why? What were they doing in there? And this one has a sailor's hat. <laughs> 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 Was that the conference? And this one cost two hundred thousand dollars. Ah, how big it is! <laughs> I would, I would like to sit on the stage and watch the audience go blind. That would be fun. <laughs> Maybe I should do that at my next show. You know, ladies and gentlemen, welcome to welcome to the stage, of Lewis Spears, and it's just me with two laser pointers in each hand, just going fucking blinding people. You know. I try and get a crowd work clip. It doesn't go that well. So I fucking blind the guy in the front row. <laughs> oh, you're an accountant. Not funny enough. Ah, boys! <laughs> that, I mean, that would go viral. This one's getting headlines. Maybe I should do that. I guys look, I, I, I probably won't. <laughs> All right. Um, what else did we have to talk about here? Oh, dude. You know what I've been doing? I can't remember. I think I, I meant to talk about this on one of the previous episodes, but I forgot. You know what I've been doing? I'm, you know that I'm such a neighborly person. Mm. Like, I, like if there's one thing that I care about, it's the, it's, it's, uh, you know, just being like a good contributor to the, to the local area. Yeah. You know, I'm, I'm an, that. an upstanding statesman of Frankston. You always talk about how much you love your neighbors. I, I do. Yeah. I really do. And, and I can only assume that they love listening to the podcast <laughs> from their living room. Yeah. Because I can hear them so they can hear me. <laughs> now, I would say these are not my neighbors, but it's certainly like in my area. There's this, there's this house, right, that has two dogs. And they're so fucking stupid and loud. Big, barking, yappy things that don't get walked enough. And their house is like right at the end of a dead end street. So their dogs will sit in the front room and look down the street. And if they see another dog, they will just bark and go fucking nuts. I think it's really funny, despite not ever needing to go down this street because it is a dead end. When I walk down it, I just have to turn around. <laughs> I think it's very funny to take my dog, wake up at six in the morning and walk down that street very slowly towards those dogs 
who flip the fuck out and wake up the whole house <laughs> just to get really, really close and then walk away <laughs> to the beautiful sounds of, shut up, stop it, stop fucking. And I've been doing that for a month every day. And I'm happy to report that that house has bought new blinds. <laughs> 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 because every morning at about 6.30, I would intentionally wake up their whole house because it amused me. Mm. That's a really good one, isn't that it? That is quite good. I like that. That is, that is, that is great. And that, you know what's really good about that is, is uh, you just couldn't get angry at me for it. Because it's your dogs yeah. and I'm just walking my dog and I have so much plausible deniability up until now. Listen, listen to this. I'm like, oh, I didn't even know they were barking, man. <laughs> Sounds like your problem. <laughs> but that's a really good one of just like punishing people with really annoying dogs. I like there was, that. That's it, good. It is a good one. Um, now, last episode, okay, I set some homework because we got an email that was just so full of unbelievably juicy information that was in five sentences. Now I'm going to, um, now this person has emailed us a proper story, but I'm going to read first what they sent us. Okay. Now, if you want to send an email to the show, send it, uh, email it to podcast at loosebeers.com. That's podcast at loosebeers.com. Send us an email. If you have a story, if you need some life advice, uh, if you heard about something crazy, if you want to ask me or Keel on something, podcast <laughs> at loosebeers.com. Uh, probably not if you want to want to ask Keel on something. Yeah. It'll be boring. But but because the show is about me, and he you know he got a he got a regular iced coffee and stole an extra shot from me. So you know it, it, you know what if you if you have uh, an, anything negative to say about Keel oh. send it through the podcast at loosebeers.com. I won't read it on the show. But, I, but I'll email you back and we can go back and forth on it a little bit. Will you forward me these emails? Yeah, I'll forward them to you. I'll, yeah. If you email me something about Keelan, I'll forward it. If it's positive, it goes to spam. Uh, so this is, the, this is the email that we were initially sent. It's five lines. One of them is so. The second line is, recently my mother had an affair with a Mormon. She works with his wife. Recently, my parents split up. The affair has been going on since July. It's now October. They now live together. Hashtag Mormon life sent from my iPhone. Fucking roller coaster of a story. I said, you need to elaborate the fuck out of this story immediately. Now, Keelan, they have emailed us back and have a look at how many fucking paragraphs. I mean, oh, that is, oh my God. that's a whole story. Yeah. So potentially... I haven't read it yet. This is way too long mm -hmm. and I'll get it to come back later. But the, the girl who, who wrote this has mm -hmm. actually tagged me in a TikTok of her writing. It's just amazing. So I know who it is. Okay. I won't, well, I, won't I don't know. If, yeah, I, well, I was protecting her anonymity. I don't know if she is, but she's not, but let's not. Yeah. Let's not because who, well, let's, let's, let's hear about it. Uh, she might she might divulge her full home address uh, in this email, judging by what she's putting on TikTok. <laughs> um, hello, it's me again, but with more details. Love it. Love it. As I gave very limited information regarding what was happening with my mother and the Mormon. I love that. The Mormon. That's <laughs> such a, that's such a, I hate, I hate, I'm, not, I'm never going to call him dad. <laughs> I'm not calling him dad. I'm not going to call the Mormon dad. <laughs> you know, that's like... Uh, did you have a good weekend with the Mormon? Would you please? <laughs> his name is Jim. Oh, sorry. He seems so. He seems so enamored with Mormonism that I thought he would like to be called the Mormon. <laughs> I love him. I don't care. I'm. I want to live with Dad. <laughs> Joseph Smith. Yeah. Is the Mormon guy. Oh, okay. As I gave very limited information regarding what was happening with my mother and the Mormon. The reasoning was that I was actually on a walk to clear my mind and simply had not planned on what was what I was going to say. <laughs> That's so funny that she 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 you know probably the Mormon probably came over. I'm going for a walk. No, come and have dinner. I'm going for a walk. <laughs> Just frantically emailing me. <laughs> like that's maybe you need to maybe you need to talk to someone else <clears throat> instead of just sending frantically. My mum's having an affair with a Mormon. Are you telling me? You got to tell a friend. <laughs> 
Surely there's someone else you could talk to. She's not just telling you, she's telling 10,000 other people as well. Oh, okay. Well, maybe this will be helpful for you. <laughs> I listened to the podcast at 9 p.m. on Sunday night as I was house sitting with my partner and I didn't have time to listen to it during the day, but I did see the clip of what you requested. I was sent the clip by some of my friends who don't know the details of what was happening with my mother. Oh, so even there, they're like, come on, bitch, tell us, give us the goss. <laughs> this is my homework. I hope you do enjoy this, but I do accept the potential feature on the pod, even though it was a joke. Um, you and Keelan had asked some questions and I'll be answering each of them now. Please sit back and relax. Okay, everyone listen to this. I would like you all to sit back and relax. Keelan, if you, Keelan's reclined his chair. Uh, we've got Bobby on the floor there. I'm, uh, I'm nice and relaxed. Please sit back and relax. I hope everyone listening is nice and relaxed. <laughs> Keelan is really... Keelan's so reclined, you probably can't hear him on the mic anymore. <laughs> How's that distant laughter you're hearing? <laughs> I will start with the timeline. Late June, early July, mother had gone away to Queensland. Oh, she's really fucked up, hasn't she? If, you call, <laughs> if you're calling her, there's, there's, if there's two words that really describe how much you fucked up your relationship with your daughter, it's hearing them say your real name or even worse, mother. <laughs> Hello, mother. How's the Mormon? Mother has fucked up. <laughs> All right, fuck, there's so, many, there's so much riding here. Um, okay, I'll start with the timeline. Late, late June, early July, mother had gone away to Queensland for a holiday. My dad was invited, but had said no due to work commitment. First mistake. When they had come back... Is that, is that your addition, first mistake? or he... No, I said first mistake. Okay. No, okay, yeah. Uh, <laughs> when, when, I, when I contribute, I'll let everyone know. Um, by, by doing it, you know what, when it's my contribution, I'll do it in an accent. <laughs> my dad was invited, but he said no due to work commitments. First mistake. <laughs> when they had come back to Melbourne, they had to isolate due to the Mormon. Be well, that was her, but becoming unwell. <laughs> Sorry, guys. There's a lot. You'll just have to, you'll just have to, um, vibe this. You'll, look, the Mormon becoming, Okay. When they had come back to Melbourne, they had to isolate due to the Mormon becoming unwell with something. I don't remember what, sorry. That's fine. <laughs> Send me his medical records when you get an opportunity. Uh, that was my addition. Uh, with him being unwell, it meant he had to go to many hospital appointments to figure out what was happening and why. Hang on. Your mum in July went on a holiday with the Mormon? They work together, don't they? But why would you go on a holiday with someone you work together? It's a holiday. You and I work together. Sometimes we go on trips. Uh, well, I, I guess, but like, but like, if we were if we were fifty, had kids, and we worked in an office, yeah, yeah. that might be a little bit strange. Yeah. Was it a work holiday? I can't believe with the amount that she's written. I'm, ask, <laughs> I'm asking for more detail. And also, how brave of her to. Does that mean that she bought two tickets for a holiday and was like, oh, my husband said no, I might as well bring the Mormon. Anyway, uh, when they came back to Melbourne, they had to isolate due to the Mormon being unwell with something. With him being unwell, it meant that he had to go to many hospital appointments to figure out what was happening and why. The Mormon's wife works in a primary school being a teacher. And when they got back, it was just before the school holidays ended, which left her being stressed about work, which left mother doing the driving appointments. She's written mother twice. This is bad. Then the time they spent together, they had become very close with each other romantically. Uh, has anyone considered that they were definitely fucking before the holiday? Why were they going on the holiday together if they weren't? I'm thinking that maybe she's just written this poorly and the holiday has actually nothing to do with the Mormon man. No, but she said that they had to isolate due to the Mormon becoming unwell with something, which to me implies that okay. mother and the Mormon were on holidays together. Okay, which well, you need to rewrite this. <laughs> okay. I was actually the first to find out what was happening between mother and the Mormon. Nobody else in my family had known until September 
Oh, so I kept it a secret for ages as it was a big piece of information that I didn't know what to do with minus cry. That did sucks. That? So you, did your did did mother tell you about the Mormon? <laughs> and then you kept it you kept it a secret from daddy? Um father. <laughs> from father. No, he hasn't done anything wrong up until this point. How I found out Oh, here we go. Great, she's told us already. We we're asking we're asking for information prematurely. She's got it all sorted. The all of almost all of the information is in here. <laughs> what was he sick with? Why were they on holiday together? How I found out was that she asked me to check something around her iPad. I'd knocked the iPad over and saw messages from this person named Silverbark. That's not good. I was quite interested as I simply did not know who this person was until I realized the Facebook profile picture mat matched the one on Messenger. I then scrolled to find more messages calling each other special friends and telling each other I love you, which was strange. Ugh, this is awful. During the affair, uh, I did live with my mother until she moved out in early September after telling me about the separation of her and my father. Oh, what's he done? He's, called, he's getting called father. Uh, I now live with my dad and older brother living our best lives and mother sometimes comes over to get things but not too often and when she does it's very spontaneous as is not discussed with anyone and she comes over usually when dad is not here. Before my parents had separated they had joined the Mormon church. They had joined the Mormon and his wife going away for his birthday uh, and my dad became quite jealous and asked mother who Silverbark was and connected the dots. Right. Okay, I'm skipping ahead a bit here because there's uh, some unnecessary... Okay. As I addressed previously, the Mormon's wife is a primary school teacher, but mother is a teacher's aide. So they live to... They work together. With mother and Mormon's wife both working at the same place, they'd gained a very close friendship which had brought both families together. Oh, they're both bad people. I oh, know, just the mother is. And the... The Mormon. Yuck. I've spoken to my mother, of course, and she's still my mother, but not about the affair. Also, I have very mixed emotions about my mum. Uh, anger, sadness, and anxiety are the few to explain how I'm feeling about this. My father is absolutely destroyed by this, to be completely honest. He's completely miserable. Also, the Mormon's wife had spread rumors about mother at their workplace and she's being transferred to another school as she can't be fired due to contract complications. My brother doesn't understand what's happening as he's on the spectrum. Uh, yeah, maybe the more, the more detailed, the more sad it gets. Uh, serious questions out of the way. I did not really think when I sent in the, uh, when I sent it in, I didn't really think about the condition the email was in when I sent it. My deepest apologies. I hope this is at your standards now. <laughs> Again, I didn't really think to delete the sent from iPhone. <laughs> and also the smiley face. I just thought it would lessen the blow of my short story. I was using the email app because I was on a walk. Lol, email was easy to access. <laughs> kind regards, name, smiley face. And she's, she's uh, put in the effort to delete from sent from my iPhone. Uh, that is good. Um, yeah, look, it sounds like uh, it sounds like you might also be on the specky, um, and uh, and that's horrible. And I feel sympathy for you. And it was much less funny than I thought it was going to be. But at least we all have some closure here. Well, not including you. But now I know what's going on, mm -hmm. and I feel a lot better. And that's what it's all about. You've gotten to vent. Thank you for listening. Uh, and uh, and I would suggest. Uh, going to your GP and asking for a mental health plan so you can go and see a therapist and talk to them about this because it really sounds like you need it because it sounds like you haven't talked to even your friends oh. about this. The only person you've told is some guy you listen to mm -hmm. on a podcast and then 10,000 other people. <laughs> uh, so that's what I would recommend is uh, is you you should go and pay, you should go and find someone to talk to. Um, but, uh, yeah, I feel sorry for your dad and it sounds like your mum's been very selfish. Yes. Um, but as someone pointed out, you are allowed to have multiple wives as a Mormon. So maybe he's doing the Lord's work. Maybe this, maybe you'll get into heaven by proxy. <laughs> Do you get a plus one? Probably not. <laughs> We have another email here, the last email of the episode, and then we're going to continue on with the Patreon version. 
By the way, you should support us on Patreon. We've got uh, a bunch of extra content. Everything goes up early. We're on a fucking roll on Patreon. And you get access to a Discord. We're living it up. Now, this one has, I think, I, I have read this one. I think it has the perfect amount of information. Uh, and it's it's called, it's uh, the subject line is bit of a yarn. Okay, this is exactly what we want on the show. Just a bit of a yarn. Something crazy happened. Tell us about it. Okay. Hey, mate. You're looking way healthier and a hell of a lot sexier. Congrats. Thank you. I might have a woman you could take from me and cause me less hassle. Okay. I've been a local at this small pub in New Zealand. See, this I, that's how I knew. I Before I read the rest of the email, I knew this is going to be good. A local at a small pub in New Zealand. Bit of a yarn. We love it. I've been a local at this small pub in New Zealand for a couple of years now, and I know everyone that frequents the place. I'm 21, and there is this 47-year-old woman <laughs> that has been trying to root me for about a year and a half. Damn. Persistent. This guy's sexy, or she's desperate, or it's both. <laughs> There's a 47-year-old woman who's been trying to root me for about a year and a half. This is all well and good, but there's a slight issue. She has a boyfriend. He's a good laugh, and to make matters worse, the boyfriend is the bar owner's brother and is twice my size. Yeah, see, you're going to get banned from your favorite bar and lose some teeth here, buddy. So I thought it was in my best interest to give her the hard word and say, yeah, nah. If you're American, that means no. All went well for a while until one night after a few too many drinks, I took both the girl and her boyfriend to a club and started touching her up. Her daughter-in-law caught us. See, the, 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 the girl who just emailed us, it could be worse. <laughs> her daughter-in-law caught us. I thought I was done, but nothing ever really came out of it. I then told her again, I can't be doing this. So a further couple of months go down the line to last weekend. I again had a few too many to drink and she needed a ride to go pick up her mates, which I, hang on. Did you just say, I had a few too many to drink, but she needed a lift. You know, when I was in New Zealand, just fucking everyone was drink driving and talking about, nah, it's all good. <laughs> Everyone was drink driving and fucking every person, every person's car that I got into did this thing that was just very common, which was the driver of the car would be, hang on, I need to check my phone. Can you take the wheel? And they would look away from the road and the guy in the passenger seat would reach over and steer. <laughs> and that's how they do it over there. Uh, and, and meanwhile, and, and also I steered. I did this as well because there was no other option. They just let go of the wheel and they're like, Spears, can you... And now I'm steering. I can't even drive a car myself. I'm fucking driving someone else's car from the passenger seat. I'm lucky to be alive. Anyway, I had a few too many to drink and she needed a ride to go pick up her friends, which I kindly said, <laughs> of course, let's do it. How kind of you? Yeah, let's get into a fucking pileup. She then touched me up and I did a bit of motorboating before picking up her mates. <laughs> so you're fucking drunk driving. Drink driving and like going to some 47 year old woman who's giving you a blowjob while you drive. I'm, you're, you're so lucky to be alive. New Zealanders are fucking nuts, man. I did a bit of motorboating before picking up her friends and driving her back to the pub where her boyfriend was. It's been pretty obvious that she wants to fool around and I think most people in the pub have noticed and I'm sure her boyfriend would have by now, but nothing has really been said. I don't know why I haven't been confronted by him or even a punch or two. A little bit confused on what to do because I don't want to lose the local pub. All the boys at work find it funny, so I thought you might relate. If there's any more updates, I'll let you know. But anyways, have a shit one. Yeah, he wants you to fuck her, man. That's what's happening. There's no, there's no way that this guy has not noticed. If everyone in the pub knows and you've gone... I mean, he said that he's gone out with her and the boyfriend and he's touched her up at the club he knows and he's an active participant and he's waiting for you to go hey should we go back to my like i don't know i'm sorry to break this to you man but but this man wants you to fuck and he wants to watch like you know they have a really comfortable chair next to the bed at home <laughs> like that's the day call that they've got they've got a nice little single arm chair and then, a, and then a double bed. Not a queen, because that, that would fit three people. Just a double. 
that's their setup. Yeah, that's that's I, I I'm sorry to break it to you, man, but that's what he wants to happen. I would ask her, does your boy does your have you haven't asked? Does your boyfriend know that this is going on? Because it doesn't it sounds like he does. It sounds like he's it's happening in full view and he's like, fuck yeah, let's go. But even here's what I would say. If he's not into it, discontinue, stop, all right? If he is into it, don't do it. Still don't do it because you're going to have to go back to the pub <laughs> and and everyone's going to know eventually and also it, it surely it gets awkward at some point. <laughs> you know what? Change pubs. Is there another pub you can go to? What do you what do you think you should do, Keelan? I think you should just keep going. And just ignore it? Just ignore it. And don't talk about it. Yeah. Yeah, blokes, that's like classic bloke way. advice. What you should do, all these feelings you're having, stuff them down. <laughs> and, and all those feelings that she's having, don't acknowledge them. And any feelings that he's having, ignore them <laughs> until until at some point it ends up in a huge blow up and the, the whole pub burns down. That's how big the fucking brawl is. I don't see any problem with that. <clears throat> yeah, great. Um, but I will also say stop drink driving. That's, that's another one. Mm. Maybe don't do that. Uh, otherwise, uh, otherwise, w otherwise, wor worst case scenario, I would say the the way the boyfriend does find out is uh, is y you two are like in a fiery wreck together, and uh, the coroner, you know, the 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 coroner is like cause of death. Dick went into the back of her brain mid car accident from from alcohol induced driving blowjob. Which would make for a great like little eulogy or, or something to write on the tombstone. Died doing what she loved. <laughs> Some young bloke. And then we'll leave it there. Thank you very much for listening. Uh, we're going to continue on Patreon right now. It's, uh, it's up right now if you want to listen. And uh, I'll talk to you guys next Sunday. Make sure you rate the show on Spotify as well. And uh, you know what? I'm going to – how about this? I'm going to do this. I'm going to leave a question on the Spotify for listeners. What do you think this guy should do? Leave your answers and we'll get back to it next week. All right. Thank you. Talk to you next Sunday. I hope you have a shit one. Bye.